Dus papa Alfa 0, Eco Tingo, Eco voor de Daily Minutes met een nieuwsupdate van vandaag 8 mei 2016. Dat is het bulletin van zondag. Today's bulletin as always on Sundays will be in English. We do have Morse code today and right after that we have an SSTV image in PD50 which is decodable with your smartphone using Robot36 app on Android or CQ SSTV on iOS. Welcome to the TX Talk podcast of the GB2RS National News for Sunday, the 15th of May 2016, supplied by the Radio Society of Great Britain and brought to you by TX Factor. And now the DX News, compiled from 425 DX News and other sources. A group of Australian operators will operate from Norfolk Island, that's Oscar Charlie 005, using the call sign Victor Kilo 9 November Tango from the 20th to the 31st of May. They plan to be active on all bands from 10 to 160 metres using CW, SSB and RTTY. And you can QSL via their manager, who's Victor Kilo 2, Charlie Alpha. Aaron, Victor Alpha 1, Alpha X-Ray Charlie will remain on the air from Sable Island, that's November Alpha 063, as Charlie Yankee 0 slash Victor Alpha 1, Alpha X-Ray Charlie. Find him on 20 meters SSB and his QSL info direct is to be sent to Juliet Echo 1, Lima Echo Tango. Hanyo Papa Yankee 4 November Yankee is operating from Fernando de Naronja, that's Sierra Alpha 003, until the 23rd of May using his Papa Yankee 0 November Yankee call sign on the 10 to 80 meter bands using CW, SSB and PSK. Logs will be uploaded to Logbook of the World. Roly Zulu Lima 1 Bravo Quebec Delta is on the air as Hotel 44 Romeo Romeo from Honiara. That's IOTA reference Oscar Charlie 047. And then on to Munda, that's Oscar Charlie 149 until the 25th of May. Activity will be on the HF bands using JT65 and possibly 160 metres using CW as well. And you can QSL direct to his home call. Gerd Delta Lima 7 Victor Oscar Golf. He's on the air as Juliet 68 Golf Uniform from St. Lucia. That's November Alpha 108 until the 22nd of May. Activity is on the 80 to 6 meter bands using CW, RTTY and PSK and QSL to his home call sign. And the European Collins Collector Association put the station Tango Mike 5 Charlie Romeo on the air every Thursdays on 14.263 MHz at 3 p.m. and on 7.165 MHz on Saturdays at 11 a.m. Both local time in Paris and visitors are very welcome to join in the net. From the headquarters of the American Radio Relay League in Newington, Connecticut, this is ARRL Audio News. Five boxes of handmade amateur radio equipment, some 400 pounds in all, left ARRL headquarters on May 4th bound for the Guayaquil Radio Club in Ecuador. The radio equipment will help to support relief and recovery efforts underway in the wake of a magnitude 7.8 earthquake that struck the South American nation on April 16th. Valued at more than $7,500, the equipment will provide reliable communication in areas where the telecommunications infrastructure suffered damage. ARRL Emergency Preparedness Man- Manager Mike Corey, KI1U, said the recovery process can be lengthy and radio amateurs in the affected area need repeaters, antennas, supports, and other things to be able to help those disrupted by disaster. This is what HamAid is for, to enable amateurs to effectively respond following a disaster to help their communities through the recovery process, he said. Most earthquake damage occurred in the Guayaquil and Porto Viejo areas. Some structures in Porto Viejo suffered severe damage, with many victims buried in the rubble of collapsed buildings and homes. In the immediate aftermath of the disaster, electrical power and commercial telecommunication systems were either destroyed or disrupted, and many roads were rendered impassable because of earthquake rubble. Corey noted that while most handmade deployments have been stateside, the opportunity arose to assist with the international disaster relief effort through the Guayaquil Radio Club.
ARRL CEO Tom Gallagher, NY2RF, said, For more than 100 years, when there is a need, we can use our communication and electronics expertise to give back. Amateur Radio answers the call when and where needed. A wildfire in Alberta, Canada that began unremarkably on May 1st soon ballooned into a major fast-moving conflagration owing to hot, dry weather, high winds, and low humidity, creating a disaster of historic proportions. The flames caused extensive property damage and led to the evacuation of the entire population of Fort McMurray in the heart of Canada's oil sands country. While the wildfire emergency never became a communications event, prompting an Aries activation, radio amateurs of Canada said radio amateurs on the ground helped other organizations such as the Red Cross. Alberta section manager Gary Jacobs, VE6CIA, reported on May 5th that Alberta Aries went on standby to provide VHF-UHF linking, although there was no HF activity due to the fact that Fort McMurray had been evacuated. According to the Amateur Radio Coalition, a national ham radio fan page on Facebook, the Provincial Emergency Radio Communication Service was put on standby to staff the radio room and to establish communication into Fort McMurray, and the club in Fort McMurray was staffing its local emergency communications center in case communications failed. Now with this week's satellite update, here's Bruce Page, KK5DO. This week, AMPSAT Vice President of Engineering Jerry Buxton, N0JY, said that January 20th, 2017, is the planned launch date for Rad FXSAT. That's Fox 1B. CubeSat. This CubeSat will fly with the Vanderbilt University radiation experiments. RADFXSAT pre-launch frequencies are as follows. The uplink, 435.250 MHz FM with a 67.0 Hz CTCSS tone. Downlink, 145.960 MHz FM. You can find the latest version of the Fox 1 operating guide at AMSAT.org. AMSAT pioneered the concept of small satellites in low orbits. AMSAT's Project FOX consists of a series of CubeSats that will provide FM transponders with a 70 centimeter uplink with a 2 meter downlink that will match the ground performance of previous FM satellites. Thanks to the AMSAT News Service and Jerry and Zero JY for this story. This is Bruce Page, KK5DO, for the ARRL Audio News. From Australia, this is VK1WIA. New study finds no mobile phone use cancer link. The incidence of brain cancer in Australia has been relatively stable over three decades, a new study led by the University of Sydney has found. This finding is counter to claims of electromagnetic radiation by mobile phones aired on the ABC program Catalyst earlier this year, which attracted widespread criticism. The study authors claim that despite the near-complete uptake of mobile phones among Australians, the devices which emit electromagnetic radiation are not shown to increase cases of brain cancer. All diagnosed cases of cancer in Australia have to be registered. The new paper drawing on this resource has found no link to brain cancer and mobile phone use. It follows studies overseas which also found no evidence that mobile phones cause brain cancer. In many countries, the challenge of space exploration continues, and here in West Australia is what could be the start of a new satellite project. This can have a place in the era of innovation and the emerging STEAM activities at schools. The OzCube 1 project is a tiny pocket cube satellite that is being built in a back shed and has been on ABC radio and television, even its own website and Facebook page. Building OzQ1 is a challenge for its builder, Stuart McAndrew, but preparing for a low Earth orbit by piggybacking with others on a space launch costs money. In his childhood he had an interest in finding out how things worked, built electronic kits, studied aviation and settled into a career in information technology. To make the OzQ1 dream closer to reality, crowdfunding through a GoFundMe campaign is underway. Rewind, a look back at our history. On the 11th of March 1910, a meeting of like-minded people in the Hotel Australia Martin Place, Sydney, formed the Institute of Wireless Telegraphy of Australia. Soon after, it dropped the word telegraphy from its name and was known as the Wireless Institute of Australia. 
Chairman of the founding meeting, George Taylor, proposed the formation of an institution amongst experimenters and enthusiasts in wireless for their mutual benefit. The WIA honours him with its highest award, the G.A. Taylor Medal, given infrequently at its annual general meeting for meritorious service.